scriptures that uh, takes me through. Uh, and a lot of people say it because it's one of those scriptures that's easy to remember for some reason, you know, to, to say it. You know, you hear it all the time. Trust in the Lord, what? what? All your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, but in every way, in all things. I'm going to change a little bit. What? Acknowledge him, and he direct your path. Precious Father in heaven, I thank you today, Lord God, for blessing us to come together before your holy presence today. Truly, Lord, you are God and you are God alone. There is no other God but you. Lord, we just thank you, Lord God, for who you are this morning, for who you are, Lord God, in our lives, for who you are, Lord God, in this world today. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you're sovereign, Lord God that you are all sufficient, Lord God, that there is no one, Lord God, but you. Father, in the name of Jesus, that is God. There is no comparison today. Father, you are altogether lovely, O oh Lord. Father, you are altogether holy and righteous, Lord. Father God, we can do nothing, Lord God, but bow at your feet, Lord God. Father, we just thank you, Lord, that you saw fit, Lord, through your son, Jesus Christ, to make us partakers, Lord God, of your righteousness. Father, we thank you today, Lord God, for the faith, Lord God, that you put in our heart, Lord God, to have confidence in you. Lord, for we are saved today, not by anything that we have done, Lord God, but by the gift of faith, Lord, that you put in our heart through the Holy Ghost. We thank you, Lord God, today, Lord, for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for the full Godhead today. We thank you, Lord, that all of that, Lord God, all that who you are today, Lord God, is with us today. We thank you, Lord God, for God, Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, God with us. We thank you, Lord, that wherever we go, wherever we move, every step we take, Lord God, that you are with us. We praise you today. When we enter this court, Lord God, you say, give thanks to the Lord. Father, we praise you today. We say, holy, 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 holy is the Lord God Almighty. He is worthy all praise. He is the first and the last, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. We serve a great and mighty God who shall come again for his church. We thank you. We praise you today, Lord, for your greatness right now. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I give God a praise today. I honor God today with my life. I thank God for saving me today. I thank God how he has been with me through many things, through many tests and many trials in my life. Not only have I seen God work in my life, I've seen him work in many of our lives. We've seen God heal and deliver. The young sister sitting there today, we prayed and we prayed as we just walked through the, the day. Lord, touch and heal her. It has, doesn't have to be some great and mighty thing. Just a few words to God. You know, he will answer your prayers. I thank God for that. All we have to do is what? Have faith and trust in the almighty God. I thank God today, uh, like I said for our sister today, you can relax and rest in God today and be assured that God is with you. God has done something in all of our lives. We all have something to praise God for. If God has, has done nothing for you, he saved those of us that are saved and those of us that if you're not saved, he have kept you alive so you can get saved. The script, I heard a man say yesterday, he said, what would I do if I wasn't saved? He said, get saved. I said, I like that. I, I got to say that. If there was nothing else, you know, if I wasn't saved, what would I do? I will get saved. That's the only alternative, sisters and brothers. Get saved today. If you don't know Jesus, he's there to save you today. Today, right now. He's an ever-present God. Thank you, Jesus. All right, let's see what we can do. Uh, today, I want to talk a little bit, if I, I can, with the help of the, the Holy Spirit. I already preached this sermon already to my sister, Severta, yesterday. <laughs> So a lot of the songs minister what I want to say today, and, and the sisters and each one of you already talked about in the brother. So we should be growing strong in our faith. Yeah. And our, our pastor, 
uh, constantly builds us up with the word of God. Amen. So if we're listening and allowing the word to get down in our heart, we our faith should increase. Right. The scripture lets us know that in the beginning when we accept Christ, we have been given a measure of faith. Each one of us have been given a measure of faith. We can't say we don't have faith. We're always looking for somebody else to, to, to pray for us and do something for us in the Lord. And nothing is wrong with that. But you can pray for yourself. Amen. You can pray for yourself. That's right. You know. That's right. Take authority in your life over the situations in your life. That's because right. you have Faith in, faith in you. Right. God gave you that gift and measure of faith, but if you want it to grow, you're going to have to work with it. That's right. There's two things that you need to do. you got to have a good diet and exercise, and that diet is the word of God. you got to eat it every day. The Bible lets us know in Matthew 4 and 4, man should not live by bread alone, but every word, every word, not some of the word, but every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And when I said exercise, which most of us don't do, that means we have to exercise our faith. And as the scriptures, we got to start believing in God, standing up like the sister said, sharing the word of God. The more we fill ourselves with God's word, that's how we get that unshakable faith. The more we put our eyesight on God instead of the storms that's going on around us, instead of the circumstances in our life, instead of the lack in our life, you know, concentrating on what we don't have and, uh, and, and uh, uh, or the resources maybe our family have. You know, God had to let me know uh, uh, this week, and I've been praying about something, and he let me know it ain't based on you. It ain't even based on you. Why is you worrying about yourself, your son, your family, whatever? It's based on what I can do. It's based on what I have. Right. It's not what your family have or what you have. I was crying to the Lord. Well, I don't have this. I don't have this. I can't stand against this here great uh, situation. He said, no, you can't, but I can. Yes. When you trust me, you can go through. Right. He let me know. Right. Put that fear aside. I gave you faith. You got to walk in it. You got to begin to take that same word that you have been going on all this time and put it to practice now. All of the things that you've been through over your whole life, uh, uh, think about what I've done for you. Quit thinking about what all is going around. Quit thinking about the storms that's raging. Think about me and how I brought you through this, this, this. This, this. If you, like David said, he, he, he helped me to overcome the bear and the lion. I can stand up against this heathen uh, uh, Goliath. Yes. You can stand up against the Goliaths in your life when you stand in the strength of God. When you go back and ponder over the things that God done for you. That's why God said meditate on his word day and night. Day and night, keep putting the word of God in your heart. Keep thinking about him and how great he is, how magnificent he is, how strong and how mighty his hand is. Give God praise, saints. Give God praise. Don't get quiet on me. Give God praise. Give him honor. We serve a great and mighty God who is so worthy, who is so worthy, who is so worthy. My Lord. Uh, you know, on my way here, I was listening at, uh, uh, on YouTube, a tape, you know, and he was talking about uh, the seraphims. He said, all they did say uh, to the Lord was holy, 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 yes. holy. And I was telling my sister, we don't even have words truly to describe God. You know, all we can say is what the word has, but we, you know, we haven't really, we haven't seen God in all of his magnificence. Right. We've seen, you know, about him in the word. We've seen him work in our lives. But we only see a little bit of what God is and who he is. Right. But what we do know, we know we should worship him, that we should bow before him, that we should exalt him in every situation, no matter what. 
That's what unshakable faith is. No matter what's going on around you, no matter what the circumstances may be, you still say, Lord, I trust you. Lord, I acknowledge you. You're greater than my enemy. You're greater than my lack. The scripture lets us know we can do what? Philippians 4 and 13. I can do all things through Christ Jesus. When it seems hard, when you think you can't go through, you bring that word back to yourself. I can. I can. I can. I can. I can. I can. I can do all things. I can walk on through this situation. I can go over my enemy. The scriptures lets us know we can go through our enemies. We can leap over a wall. You might I think about oh what what does that mean that means you know what you just pile through you just keep going and he said leap you think about a long per a young person an athlete so in the spirit you know my body may be weak you know, right now I need all kind of shots in my back, in my knees, and in my ankle. But in my spirit, I'm strong. I'm a strong man. I'm a, I'm a conqueror. I'm mighty in God. I'm all that and a bag of chips, as they say. Because of God. Not because of who I am, but because of him. Because of the word that I carry. Because of the spirit of God lives on the inside of me. Who can stand before me when I say that great name? Jesus Christ. Who can? They they have to fall. The demons have to back up. God let me know I was in a room and I was telling my sister, demons all around me. I told her I was dealing with so much evil forces. They were so strong. I, I, I really thought I was could never come out of it. I was scared to close my eyes. And God just like appeared to me holding, you know, uh, a Bible. But he said, you're going to have to overcome this through the living word. In other words, through me. It is through me that you will overcome these type of enemies. You can, you can, only through God can you overcome the devil. We can't overcome the devil in our strength, but we can overcome him in the strength of God because we have his weapons that he gave us. He gave us his blood, the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus covers us. We stand in the righteousness of God because he has cleansed us from all unrighteousness. We're clothed, clothed in the armor of God. We can go forth, saints of God. We can stand strong. As, as, what type of faith is unshakable faith? It's a faith that is firm, that is steadfast that is unbendable, that is unfaltering, unwavering, steady, firm in purpose, determined, resolute. Okay. That's the type of faith is uh, unshakable faith. That doesn't mean that we won't be afraid sometimes. Right. God knows that we would be afraid. They said the, the word fear is in the Bible about 365 times. You know, we, are, we see God when, when his... Uh, Children or disciples, however you want to look at it, sometimes they're afraid. And he's telling them, fear thou not. In the scriptures, fear thou not. Fear thou not. He said what in 2 Timothy 1 and 7? I did not give you the spirit of fear. See, the fear is a weapon of the enemy, of Satan. That's one of his weapons. Love is a weapon of God. He said, I gave you a spirit of love and a sound mind. See, the enemy don't want you to have no peace. He wants you to be worried and full of anxieties. Right. That's right. Right. Looking at the storms, looking at what's going on around you. Right. And sometimes, you know, we're facing, maybe in the natural, people or things that seem, you know, like, you know, maybe they're, they have more resources or, or, or different things. And you, you look at yourself and you feel inadequate. But that's when you tell yourself that I serve a great and a mighty God who created the whole earth. Everything in this world belongs to God. He don't lack anything. And you know, if you take the time and pray and get in God's presence and stay before his face and let God talk to you, and build you up and give you a word. It could be from the scripture or it could be a, a, a word that the Holy Spirit speak to your heart. And when you have that word and assurance from God, 
There is nothing and nobody who can stop what God says. That's his word. He said his word, what, will not go out void. It will accomplish all that he sent it to do. All that he sent for it to do. So if God have given you a word, it could have been five years ago or however long. There's times I pray for things. It took three or four years, maybe six years, seven years, but you got to hold on. You can't waver. You can't let doubt come in. You can't start crying, Lord, when you going to do it, if you going to do it. You got to tell yourself, I know he's going to do it. Or then you get to that place, it's already done. And that's when you begin to stand still and see the salvation of God. Salvation also is deliverance. When God may deliver you from a problem or something that you, you know, going through, a situation. It may be, uh, um, it could be uh, something that you stand in need of in your household or whatever it is. Uh, I may have told this before. My sister, Severta, we're always together. And, uh, and I told her, I said, you know what? We needed to go to the grocery store and get some food and different things. I said, God gonna supply all of our needs. I said, it ain't based on us. It ain't based on how much you got and how much I got. God's gonna take care of it. He's gonna give us everything that we stand in need of. And when we got to the store, we started putting this and that in the basket and so forth. And I saw this man, he just kept following me every aisle I went down. And I'll say, what, 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 what's going on here? Because I say, I know I ain't, I ain't doing anything wrong. Right. You know, I'm just getting my grocery. Right. And I went down the other aisle, here he came. <laughs> I turned around, then finally I said, what, what do you want? <laughs> Why are you following me? I said, I'm not doing anything wrong. I said, do you work for this store? Are you security or something? He said, no, I'm just uh, uh, waiting on you to uh, finish getting your grocery because I'm going to pay for it. Wow. I'm going to pay for it. Severna, remember, he paid for it. And when he got up to the line, I said, you joking? And the uh, girl that, ca- that ring you out, she said, no, he ain't joking. He do this. Wow. And she said, you was, he must have chose you today. Right. And I told her, I said, see how, how God is. See how God is. See how God is. See how God is. I didn't have any money. Uh, I believe it was about a month ago. I mean, I didn't have nothing. I prayed. I said, Lord, please. And I said, well, let me go home and get my mail and all that different stuff. So when I opened the mail, I saw this real important letter from uh, my mortgage company. I said, well, what do they want, Jesus? Right. You know. So when I opened it up, it was a nice check. Right. And I said, Lord, where'd this come from? Right. I said, is it real? <laughs> and I took it to the bank. And she, I said, is a hold on it? She said, no. Nah. <laughs> Normally, it's a hold on it. And uh, they said I had overpaid too much on my insurance. And I said, well, how? it must have been a whole lot of times. <laughs> and I said, well, I said, well, thank you, Jesus. And, and it was enough for me to take care of all of my bills for that month. Then I I turned around and I told my sister, I said, I'll be saying this, I heard this preacher, you ever heard him say money coming? So I started saying it, money coming. Then a person gave me a nice little piece of change. Then later on a nice little piece of change, I shared it with some, and I said, well, thank God. But I said, I said, Lord, you really surprised me and I'm grateful, I'm so thankful for what you have done for me because I was so much in need at that time. I really was. And I thank God for that. So it's according to what he has, not what I have or what we have. So God wants us to stand firm, to be steadfast, to be unbendable, to be unfaltering, to be unwavering, to be steady, to be firm in our purposes, to be resolute. And to keep putting the word of God in our hearts. As the scriptures say, faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But you have to allow the word to get rooted 
down in your heart and let the word of God begin to transform you into the image of Jesus Christ. We don't want to have that mind that we had before we were saved. We want to get the mind of Christ. Once we get the mind of Christ, I can't see anybody when I put these on and need a further read. But when we get the mind of Christ, we should be doing the things that he do. Right. Saying the things that he says. Right. Being like him. So if we look through the scriptures, uh, Pastor Williams has spoken Mark, and, and it showed how Jesus was always a man of action. Right. And we as Christians, we should be women and men of action. Yeah. We should be looking for every opportunity to do something for God. See, Jesus Christ, uh, everywhere he went, he had compassion for the people around him. And that's how we should be. Right. And I thank God for my sister here today. She didn't know Sister Kim, but I thank God how she comforted her. Like she said, if she needed somebody to go to the hospital, she can call her now. Yes. So, you know, that's how we should be. She's a stranger to her probably. Y'all don't know each other, do you? But see, that's how we should be. But there would, should have been no reason for you to go by yourself if you would have just let us know. <laughs> so somebody would have been able to go. So, but uh, let us keep one another uh, close in prayer. And you know, when we going through things, uh, let let somebody know. Let somebody know you're going through something or you got to do something. We want to thank God for that. That uh, that there's people there for us. You know, God is there for us, but He's 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 for us through people too. Yes. And that's that's how it works. He works on our behalf through others, right. and um, and so we should uh, allow that help and that support to come to. And that's one reason why a lot of people join churches. You know, a lot of people really join churches for those times. You know, when they got to go to the hospital or when someone is sick in their family or there's a death or something in the family, they got to what you know, especially in the south, you got a home church. Right. You know, some people, even if they ain't saved, they got a home church. They'll tell you, I go to so-and-so church. Or my mama go there. Right. And so forth. But let me, let me say this. Now, most of y'all here n knew my mother. Mm -hmm. And I think she was a, a great example of having unshakable faith. Right. I learned about unshakable faith from a child from my mother and my grandmother. Like when Paul talks about Timothy, you know, about your mother and your grandmother, I said, that's me, that's me. But I used to look at my mother and she would say, God gonna do this, and I would tell, oh my, that's crazy. That's crazy. Why would you, you know, uh-uh. You going too far, you just like. <laughs> but she would not waver. She didn't even argue back with me. Well, you know, that, that, no, she just stood firm in what she believed. And she would tell you that this is going to happen because I prayed. I believed God. And she would never waver. She wouldn't let nothing deter her from what she believed God spoke to her heart. And when it came to pass, there was nothing we could do. <laughs> we'll say, well, yeah. And a lot of times she was always right. She had a great uh, uh, what you call discernment too. Mm -hmm. She could really, you know, like see into people's like heart, mm -hmm. you know. And she had that gift of discernment. Mm -hmm. But one point of bringing her up is, as Christians, our faith we can leave it as a legacy yes. to yes. other people, and especially right. our children. Yes. All right. And that's what you know we want to do. And I, I often tell my sisters. You know, uh, we used to get together and pray all the time, and me and Severta, we still do it. And, um, and I said, well, at some point, somebody in our family, these younger ones, my sons, my nieces, my nephews, my grandbaby, my granddaughter, they're going to they gonna have to stand up. Yeah. They're going to have to suit up. Mm -hmm. You know, that's my prayer, mm -hmm. that, that they will come along and, and do what we're doing. That's right. And that's what we want in the church. And we're seeing these young men do that. Yes. And you know, your children is watching you. 
you know, what you're doing and looking at what you, and listening at what you say. Mm -hmm. So as Christians, we can leave a legacy of faith, of unshakable faith to our children and to those that are around us. You know, when we just stand up and, and say, you know, we, we believe God, we're going to do it his way, we're going to trust him with all of our heart, we're not going to lean on to our understanding, we're not going to start calculating what's, uh, well, maybe we should do this or do that. We're good at doing that. Or when, when something occurs in our life, first thing we start doing is, is start calculating, well, maybe I should do this or maybe this, or, or what do you think? And then if that person don't give you what you think, you should uh, do, then you go to somebody else. What, well, what do you think? This is the situation that I'm going through. What do you think? Then maybe you don't get what you want from them. They go to somebody else. What do you think? You know? But did you take the time and, and put God's word to the situation? Did you apply it to the situation? Did you put what God think to the situation? It's not what all of us think or what I think. It's what God thinks. It's, it's what God wants. It's what God says. And when we have unshakable faith, and the way we build that in ourselves is based on, too, how we see God. Yeah. How we see God yeah. and, and how we see who we are in Christ. Right. How we see ourselves in Christ. Let me move on. I'm going to try to use some of my notes. Ain't that something? <laughs> Uh, we have to have an intimate knowledge of our Lord. How yes. do we do that? How do we do that? Somebody just tell me real quick. Spend time, Spend time doing what? Reading the word, praying, listening. Listening. In his presence. Right. Talking to him. Talking to him. Right. Listening to him. All that. And when we go through the word, I, I, I would uh, tell everybody, get you a, uh, like this, this is nothing really, y'all, but my journal. Stuff <laughs> that I write down, you know, maybe on a daily basis, <coughs> basis, my prayers and so forth. Then, you know, if I want to, I can turn them into a scripture, I mean, to a sermon or something. Right. But this is just stuff I be, you know, talking to the Lord about and going through the scriptures and, and so forth. And, and I just, you know, sat there and I said, okay, Lord, uh, what are some of the things that we know about God's character? First of all, we know God is what? Faithful. Yeah. We serve a faithful God. We know God will be there for us. A lot of times, you know, when we go through these situations, we cry and you know, we ask God, well, why did this happen to me? And so forth. Right. And we think God don't love us and God don't care. But see, that's Satan uh, talking to us and we're listening to him because we already really truly know that God loves us. We yeah. have to fight and contend, you know, for our faith right. in God. You know, for the enemy, the Bible already let us know that he came what? To kill, yeah. steal, yeah. and destroy. Yeah. He yeah. want to take away your faith. He want to take away, uh, uh, the knowledge of you knowing God and how he cares right. and loves for you that he will make prepar he already made preparation for you for whatever is in your life you you can you should know that you can face tomorrow because what Jesus is already there right. he's already there he don't have to get there like we do he's already there there is no time on our God we 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 serve a God that's what omnipresent omniscient, you know, what? Omnipotent. Omnipotent. All-knowing, yes. all-powerful, all and everywhere. Satan can't do all that. People think that, oh, he over here, he got a little help. <laughs> but still, he ain't nothing but a created instrument of God. Yes. God has power yes. over him. And we have to keep that in mind. Yes. We have to keep that in mind. We serve a God that controls everything and everybody. Yes. He is right. God the creator. We serve a God that, that is loving, that is good, that is wise. We serve a God that is a present help. Mm -hmm. God, you know, the scripture, what, Psalms 46 lets us know he's a present help in the time of trouble. Yes. We, we, we learned with Moses when he wanted to know, who should I say sent me? Uh -huh. He said, say that I am that I am. 
We serve an all-sufficient God. Yes. There is nobody that can take away anything from him. He already has everything. Right. And so when you need something, you already know in your mind. I serve a God that's what? All-sufficient, all-knowing, all-powerful, everywhere at one time. He know all the situations before they happen. He know what's going to come in your life way before you do. He knew before you was born what you was going to have to deal with. God already had a plan. Anybody ever seen, seen a cartoon long time ago uh, called Mr. Fix? Anybody ever seen that? And he would always, you know, something would go wrong. You know, he'd be creeping around the corner. I got a plan. And because his name was Mr. Fix. He could fix it. I say that's Jesus. He's Mr. Fix. That's all we have to see. He can fix anything, any problem, anything that you're going through. God already knows it. God was showing me something. I only shared it with uh, my sister. And, you know, and I, and it, I ain't going to lie. It scared me. It really scared me. But now I see why God showed it to me. He was letting me know this is what you're going to be dealing with. But I thank God that I know he, whatever, he has it. He has it in his control, under his power. And I thank God for that. Those are the times, you know, when we're afraid that we can trust in our God. We can look to him. And, you know, he sees our tears. He, you know, like, well, even when something's simple, you might have to go through a surgery and you're afraid. We can look to our God and know that he's a God that heals. Amen. He's Jehovah Rapha. Yeah. You know, he's a God of peace. Jehovah Shalom. Yes. Tere got one of those books with all the names of God that she told us. I, I will tell everybody, get them one. Uh, we serve a God that we can lean on. We serve a God that his promises that he promises to supply all our needs. We yeah. serve a God who promises to protect us. We serve a God that is our fortress. We, we serve a God who wants to have a personal relationship with us. Yes. We have to remember that he is our father. Yes. And you know, in our spirit cries out, Father Abba. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of us who had a loving father in the natural, what, you know, I had a father that I believe he would do anything for me. Right. He loved me. He cared for me. Most of us had a dad like that. But if you didn't, then God takes that place in your life. That's right. and, you know, and I pray for uh, uh, children and people who don't have a father. Yes. That, you know, God, I always ask him, be their father, Lord, or be their mother, Lord. He will be all that to you. Right. If, there's, if you're lacking a father, if you're lacking a mother, that support system, you can find it in Christ Jesus. Amen. But you got to make yourself available to God. Right. you got to uh, uh, get into a relationship. You have to accept him right. as your personal savior. you got to believe that he is the replacement uh, uh, for the death that we would have received. And you have, then, once you do that, and you believe that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, mm -hmm. now sits on the right hand of the Father, yes, right. then you can be his child. Yes. And then everything that's available to you through God is there for you. Yes. And that's how we know we, when we get that word settled down in our hearts, we can have that unshakable faith. Yes. We can stand firm. And children of God today, God let me know that whatever, not just we need, our family needs, our church needs, our world needs. Yeah. See, we don't realize the power. We should be controlling the world. He said take dominion. Not the unsaved people doing everything that they want to do. What are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? It ain't enough, whatever it is. Whatever it is, it ain't enough. We got to step up the game. We got to step it up. And Jesus lets us know that if we draw near to him, he will draw what? Near to us. So we can have that closeness with God. That closeness, that intimacy with God. I thank God too that once, you know, we begin to Trust the Lord for who he is. Feed ourselves on the word of God. S stay prayerful in the word of God. When these tests and trials come, yeah. you know, we can, you know, be like Jesus. We can say, peace 
be still. Yeah. See, we can talk to the storm. Yeah. We can do it. We don't have to wait on Jesus to come. We can speak it ourselves. We can tell the storm to ease back or to get back and stand still and wait on God to do the rest. See, God is waiting for us to talk. He's waiting for us to speak. He's waiting for us to speak to these situations, the things that we see, the injustice that we see in the world, the sin that we see in the world. We, we need to be, if, if you can't, uh, uh, di directly deal with it or speak to a person about it, you certainly can what? Pray about it. You, you know, we should be interceding on behalf of those that are lost. Church, we can, we can get the lost. We really can. If, she, if we do like she said, if we stand up, suit up, and speak up, we can do all the things that need to be done in this church, right. in this church. If we work together and get unified in one purpose and have that unwavering, unshakable faith, we can do what God wants us to do. We got to stand behind our pastors, our leaders, Amen. and do what God have us to do. We don't have time to be standing around worrying about other things. Right. We got to put God's purposes First, what he wants. Yeah. We can start praying for whatever, you know, situations, but we got to move on in God. It's time for us saints to get on fire for God. You know, we was in here while the worship service, we was all hyped up and we was praying and we was praising. It was real because I was doing it myself. But that builds us up so we can be strong. That same way that we get united in that worship is the same way that we get together and get out and move out and, and do that work that God wants us to do, yeah, to yeah. build his, up his kingdom, to win souls, to take back the world, to take it back from Satan. That's what God wants us to do. Start working on one person at a time. Ask God to give you one person that you're going to work on and pray for, or a family. It could be someone in your own house. Or you know, a friend, a co-worker, yes. and start praying for them and asking God, Lord, help me to win that person to yes. you. Yes. Lord, I want to give you that soul, Lord. Okay. And if you ask God, the Holy Spirit will help you because you can't do it in your own strength. Yes. But the Holy Spirit will help you win yes. a soul. And I was, you know, I have to use my sister cause, my, and my sisters because I'm with them all the time, mm -hmm. pretty much. And... One thing I told Severta about my other sister, which is Caroline, I don't hardly ever hear her, I can't say that I hear her ask God for anything for herself. Right. Ever. Right. She's always praying about souls. That is so important to her. That is the majority of the things that she pray about when she's with us. She just got books, she got names, uh, that she just be praying for, for their soul salvation. And I'm, I'm sure that she probably picked that up from my mother because she was like that. She may not have wrote it down and stuff like her, but she had a little book like this too. My grandmother had one too. Write everything down. I got one for everybody that's a single. I'm going to give you one. I'm going to bring them, everybody, get you a journal going. You know, where you can look back and say, God did this, God did that. Yeah. So when yeah. this here storm come, oh, yeah, I can handle that. Yeah. I can handle that. Yeah. But back to her, God showed this about, about me, about her. She has such a heart for people, uh, for, the, for, for people's soul. And I thought about when they said, uh, when you can be trustworthy, I said, well, Who's somebody I know that's a person of integrity? And I thought about her. As a sister, I grew up with her and been with her most of my life. You know, we stayed together for a very long time. And I watched her. She has always been faithful to God yes. in every way. Mm -hmm. And when she says she was going to do something, you can trust her to do it. Yes. She was trustworthy. She was faithful to the Lord. She honored him with her life 
and not only, you know, in all her substance. So whatever she had, she gave it to the Lord. And I always think she gives too much because people don't appreciate her. They really don't. Because she does. Who said right? Oh, I thought she did. I was say what? <laughs> but she just keep on going. Sometimes we didn't appreciate her like we should. I know sometimes one of my brothers didn't. You know, sometimes the way he ain't, he didn't pass on, but he with the Lord, he might can hear me, I don't know. <laughs> but sometimes he was mean to my, my sister. He would just do anything. But later on, they stayed together. She took care of him. But you know, a lot of people like, I ain't gonna be bothering him. He, took, he treated me like a dog. Mm -hmm. But no, what did she do? Went on and did everything she could. I want to be like that. When she, you know, one thing I heard her ask God for herself, Lord, make me a, a woman of grace. Right. A woman of grace, and I never forgot that. And that's a prayer that everybody should pray yeah. for right. in their life. I love my sister because she is faithful, and God loves you. Yeah. And he's going to give you the desires of your heart. Yeah. That's one of the things I, that I got you on display, but you know me. I'm going to say what well, God gave me to say, and I don't care. I really don't, because when you speaking from the authority of Christ, you speak it. You speak it. God told me he's going to give you the desires of your heart, and the desires of your heart is for souls to be saved, to see your, your family members saved, to see their children and their children saved. God will save and bless your family from generation to generation to generation. If you believe God for that, he will save your children, your children's children and children for generations. For thousands of generations, God promises blessings to us. God lets us know that he loves us and he loves our children. Children, he loves our family. He going he gonna to bless you and he's going to give you the desires of your heart because you know why? They're based on the word of God. Yeah. It's what he wants. It's not what you wanted. It's what he wants. So you believe and you get ready because God's going to bless you. He's going to exalt you and bring you to that place that you so deserve because you've been faithful. See, God honors faithfulness. He don't wait till you get to heaven. He's going to honor you right here and now. You wait, you wait and see. You wait and see what God going to do. And the things that's in your heart for God, you begin to speak them out. Begin to walk around this church. Begin to speak out what your desires for this church is. And begin to believe God to bring it to pass. Because I believe with all my heart that God's going to do it. He's a God of restoration. He's going to restore this church greater than what it was in the beginning. You couldn't even find a seat in here. Every, anybody that was here a long time, no, we had a huge choir. We had a large Sunday school. How many people we had in the Sunday school? Over a hundred just in the Sunday school. It can be done again. We serve a great and mighty God. We talk the talk, but we got to walk the walk, saints. We got to begin to believe God for his greatness. We got to believe God for he, who he is. Let's believe God. Stand up and give God praise. Begin to believe God that we going forth in the name of Jesus. That we don't take the world for God. We don't take the world for God. We don't take the world for God. We gonna see us rise and be strong in the might of our Lord Jesus Christ. I believe in God for uh, save for families to come in for men. We need some more men in this church. We need some more men to support our brothers. Praise God. I'm believing God for strong men to come in this church, to come help, come alongside, to come alongside. You want to say something? Okay. You want to say something else? I was just praying that the same thing that you say this morning. Amen. And I've been praying it for a while. And I believe God to do it. That's one of the desires of my heart. I want to see this church thrive to the glory of God. Not for ourselves, to the glory of God. I want to see us walk and do the things that God say we can do. We can be a mighty force for God. We can be a mighty force for God. For wherever we lack and God will increase us. He said that he would, what, extend our borders. He will give us what? Territory. I heard a lady preach. She said she's going to take all the area where she at. See, we used to believe that. This is community fellowship chapel. The community. We're going to take it for the Lord. Do you believe it? 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 Do you believe you can take the area 
Do you believe this church can be filled with people full and on fire for God? Lord, let the fire of God fall down on us, oh God. Extend us, Lord God, to have that faith in you, Lord God. We are a deliverance church. We are a deliverance church. We are a deliverance church. We carry a lot inside of us. We have a lot inside of us. We are not, and in the natural, we are intelligent people. Amen. Everybody in here, Amen. full of gifts and talents to be used for God. We don't want to sit down on them because the more we use them, the more God will give us. The more God will give us. Let's don't get satisfied with what we have. I want to give God praise for each and every one of you today. So at some point, we're going to have to get together and decide how we're going to do this. How we going to do this? You know, yeah. we got to have a plan. God going to give it to us. He going to give it to us through our sister, uh, Sister Caroline, and, and through the others that uh, God has put in place. And when we come together and we trust God, then the rest of us go out and do what God said. We going to go together and do it. We going to take it. We going to take it. We going to move out in that unshakable faith that God gave us. Come on, y'all. Get with it. You ain't getting with my program. You getting with the Lord's program. We ought to be giving God praise. We ought to be giving God praise. We ought to believe God is going to happen. It's going to happen. Let's get excited about our Lord Jesus Christ. And the next time we come back through here again, like on a Sunday, let's tear the roof off this house. Okay? Let us give our holy God the praise that he deserves. When we start praising God, when we start giving him the worship he so deserves, we will see our enemies flee from before us. That's a weapon. It's a weapon. Praise and worship is it's, it's adoration to God, but it's also a weapon. It moves the enemy. The enemy will move back when we get to praise God. When we begin to walk in that love that God gave us. Let's walk in love that God gave us. Let's walk in that unity that God gave us. That's the only way we're going to be able to do it. Because if we divide it, we can forget it. Yes. If we ain't all together, we ain't going to get it done. You know, we, you know, if you want to be part of it, be part of it. But if you don't, get left behind. Get left behind. Let's go in the name of Jesus. 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 Our world is here. Our world is our family. Then we go on out to the other parts or wherever and do what God gave us to do in that unshakable faith, in that unshakable faith that God has given us. I praise God for his love and mercy today. He is so good. He is so holy. And once we get that good glimpse of who we serving, we should get on fire. We should get on fire. We should get on fire for God. You know, <clears throat> I'll be the first to repent that I have not done enough. I have not done enough. And I got to, you know, get it together. You know, you can't be, you know, worried about, oh, my leg hurt or oh, my back hurt. No, I'm tired or whatever. I can't make it or whatever. Do what you can do. If you can't get out, pray. Fill yourself with the word. Get on the phone and call somebody. Ministry comes in all kind of ways. If you can sing and can't get out, call them and sing them a song. Surround them with a song of deliverance. Sing to them until they heal. Amen. Whatever you know how to do, whatever gift you have, don't wait for to be in the choir or to be up here to sing a solo. Do it wherever you at. Do it. God gave you the gift of teaching or whatever. If you get one person and teach, teach them. If maybe it be a child, whatever. I'm believing God for my neighbors because they get on my nerves with all that noise. You know, I love them and I care about them, and I see they really need Jesus. And, and so I'm, I'm believing God for that household next to me. Y'all pray with me for my dear sister and her family. Because I, I, I really believe in God. She's really hurt and broken. And she, she needs the love of God. She know about God. She got a head knowledge of God. But she got to get God in her heart. And I'm believing God to, to, to get in her heart. To, you know, to break some of those strongholds in her life and in the life of her children. They got a large family. And I'm believing God for them. 
I'm believing God to save that family. Yeah. I'm believing God. Pray with me. I ain't going to give no name, but just pray with me for that. Yeah. Pray with me for my neighbor. I live on Euclid Avenue. Oh, no. And I'm believing God no. for it to work it out. In the name of Jesus. 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 There's a whole uh, apartments down there. I believe in God. You know, I'm trying to think of a way, you know, I can get in there. You know, some kind of way. God going to tell me how to do it. I believe him and I trust him to help me to uh, reach the people that I want to get reach. And I'm going to believe it. I'm going to believe it. I'm going to see it. And I'm going to say, Lord, I see what God has done. He answered my prayers, and I can put that in my book. All right. I can say, well, here, on such and such a day, God brought this to pass. Yes. All right. yes. That encourages you. You know, you can look back and say, well, on this here day, I prayed for thus and so, and God did it. Yes. Right. Yes. You know, or as you heard somebody else's testimony such and such a God. He blessed Sister Kim and brought her through a surgery. She didn't have to have her leg removed. So maybe you might have to face something uh, in a surgery and you can say, well, you know, Lord, you, you done this here for her. You can do this for me. You know, so. And I thank God for every testimony that I've been hearing for Sister um, um, Laura's testimony about Sister Stafford. She was, you know, a member in her children you know, for a long time, and she holding on for the Lord, and I thank God. Um, I miss Sister Birdery and all of them. Sometimes, you know, every now and then I call her. I hadn't called her in a long time, so um, that's something I, I need to do. Y'all pray for me. Really pray for me. I need your prayers. I really do. Did you want to say something? And uh, It's time to roll out, I guess. <laughs> I thank God for... Uh, my other set of new family, <laughs> Sister Janine and her daughter. I thank God for y'all coming today. I'm so encouraged uh, by your support and your love. You just have really uh, been there for me, been there for my children, been there for my family, and I love you for it. I really do. May God bless you, and you will be blessed. Thank God for that. You keep going on in the Lord. You let God... Uh, work with your heart and work with your heart. Work with our hearts. Trust him for what you desire and ask God to bring it to pass. And I'm going to turn it over to what? To Pastor Caroline? <laughs>